Hello, amazing artists. It's Kelly Folsom here. Welcome back to another Art Life Conversation. Do you ever wonder if any artist actually loves their work? Are you ever like jealous of another artist that actually seems to be really happy with the work that they're creating and proud of the work that they're creating while you feel like your work is never good enough? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you three secrets to creating work that you love. So let's dive in. <coughs> Excuse me. Secret number one is to trust yourself and follow your own artistic voice. Basically, this is listening to yourself. This is being authentic as an artist. This is paying attention to your own creative voice, your own creative juices, following the threads. Usually it, they're intuitive threads of I like this, I don't like that. I like to work this way, I don't like to work that way. But basically, whenever you can follow your own artistic voice and trust in that, you're going to be happier with your work when that, whether that's you know, trusting yourself in what you, what kind of colors you like, what kind of paint you like, what kind of brush strokes you like to make, for example, uh, what kind of genre do you enjoy painting the most? Uh, do you like uh, really light paintings? Do you like to paint really big paintings? Do you like to paint really small paintings? Basically, uh, you already have an artistic voice inside of you. It's really just a matter of you listening to that and honoring that and not getting caught up, you know, in thinking that somehow everybody else knows how to do this, but not you, right? So following your own voice and honoring that and listening to that every step of the way. And I would also say just getting curious and asking questions in regards to your own artistic voice, maybe going to an art museum and paying attention to, you know, what do I really think about this painting or this sculpture or whatever the work of art may be? What are, what's my opinions on it? Like expressing those opinions to yourself as well as to others if they're willing to listen and not just shut you down, right? Like actually taking time to try to discover who you are as an artist, who you are really inside as an artist. And that really begins with you making the time to discover that. You know, for me, whenever I was in art school, my first year, one of the things that I started doing is I started keeping a folder of, you know, I would get these art magazines or art books and I would start keeping a folder of things that I liked or I disliked. And I started writing about, just journaling about, you know, what is it that I really love about this painting? What's speaking to me? What is it that I don't like about this painting over here? Why, why am I not drawn to that? So you can do simple processes like that that can kind of help you discover your artistic voice and of course eventually discover your style of painting as well you know the the actual process or style that you're going to paint in over time that can that one can actually take a bit more experimentation and a bit more time but you can get started right away by discovering uh, what your artistic voice actually is, even without having a clear style yet, or even without having like a really strong skill set. That's something that you can start on immediately as a beginner. Okay, so secret number two is avoid comparison, <laughs> which is funny because I was just saying like, look at other artists, look at other art, you know, to kind of find out what your artistic voice is. So how is that different than comparing? And listen, our brain is constantly comparing. We're constantly comparing where we're at to where we want to be to where we used to be. We're comparing our art to their art and where our art used to be, you know? So our brain is naturally always comparing. I learned this from a wonderful um, psychologist, Dr. Paul, and it was such a breakthrough moment for me whenever he said this is just like basically you're stuck with this your brain is constantly comparing 
Um, but the beautiful part about it was like, once you're aware of that, you can be aware of it and you can also make different choices and kind of catch yourself whenever you're negative, negatively comparing. So what I mean, we can compare in order to question and to learn and to discover and kind of understand ourselves by comp comparing what we like versus what we don't like. But you want to avoid comparison, falling into that comparison trap where you are looking at other artists, um, whether it's art teachers or other, other artists that you know of, comparing your work to theirs and thinking that yours is not good enough, right? And thinking that they know better than you. Like they have more experience than you. <laughs> They're more successful than you. They must have all the answers, right? Well, they do have all of the answers for them. They know what their artistic voice is. They know the process and what works for them. But here's the funny thing about art. <laughs> there are fundamentals that we learn and that are underlying all art making, but that is not going to be, it's not going to be the same artistic voice for everybody. We are all unique, you know, much like our fingerprints or snowflakes. Like we, I might actually paint in a similar style or a similar genre to another artist, but the process still is going to be very unique and nuanced to me and what works for me and my artistic voice. So you just want to watch out, you know, falling into that comparison trap. Um, and when you are comparing your work to somebody else's negatively and having like a negative emotion around it, basically, you're not making space for you to appreciate your own work, right? You're basically looking at your own work and going, it's not as good as theirs, or it's not good enough. So you really can't create work that you love if you can't at least at first accept the work that you're creating and appreciate who you are as an artist, right? So that's the first step. You cannot love the work that you are creating if you can't do that. And artists who do feel good about their work and do love the work that they're creating and enjoy the work that they're creating, this is this is how they operate. This is how I operate now. But it wasn't it wasn't how I operated in the early days in the beginning. Okay, secret number three is to let good things in, right? So first you've got to kind of accept um, who you are as an artist, the nature of how you create and what you enjoy creating. First, you've got to accept that first and make it okay. <laughs> it's okay to be who you are, you know? It's okay to like what you like. It's okay to do what you do. First it has to come acceptance. And then through that acceptance can then come appreciation, right? So from there, you want to really, truly be grateful for what you can create, really appreciate what you create. To be able to go up to one of your own works of art and be able to say, I really like that brushstroke right there. It doesn't mean that we see our art as like, oh, it's so perfect, you know? It's not like we're <laughs> walking around going, I'm the best artist ever, <laughs> you know? And and that's okay too. Like if, if you're an artist and you're in that place, like more power to you. Um, but it's really getting yourself to a place where you can actually compliment yourself and also receive compliments in return. So as you're putting your work out there and somebody else is praising you and complimenting you, you know, developing the skill to actually receive that compliment, that's part of really self-love and self-care as an artist. And sometimes in the beginning, that can be really, really hard to do. If you're anything like I used to be, I used to, every time somebody would compliment my work in the early days, 
I'd be like, oh, but I would point out everything that was wrong, <laughs> you know, with the painting. Or I would say, oh, you're just being so nice. Thank you. Like they're just trying to be nice. Like they don't genuinely mean it. How could they, you know, because my work is terrible. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how I used to feel. And maybe you feel that way too right now. So my challenge and invitation to you, if you're in that situation right now, where where you're behaving that way, where somebody compliments you and you tear tear the work down or you can't even really say thank you, is just to first say thank you. Just say thank you back to that person. Thank you so much. You know, receive that. Open up and receive that, even if it's uncomfortable. And for a lot of us, especially those of us who have some strong, you know, inner critics, it, <laughs> Right now, we have some perfectionism issues, okay? You know who I'm talking to. I might be talking to you right now. <laughs> for, for those of us like myself in the past that was in that situation, um, that can be so awkward and uncomfortable. It could be like, you know, pulling teeth just to say, thank you so much and shut up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Over time with practice, okay, with practice and with nurturing yourself and, you know, not letting your inner critic just rage and drive the car of your mind all the time, eventually over time, you're actually going to be able to really feel it. You're going to actually be able to feel that appreciation in your body, you know, and you're going to feel that emotion and you're going to be so appreciative of somebody giving you that compliment, you know, and it's going to be a genuine, thank you so much. And when you get to that place, my friend, you can really come alive as an artist and you will receive so much more, you know, you'll receive more abundance you will receive more support because you are opening yourself to receive more. All right, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Please know that you're not alone. I've been on this journey. If any of these things that you're struggling with, there's a reason why I'm talking about them, because I have experienced every single one of them. And they still sometimes show up. In my in my in my beautiful little mind and my beautiful heart still to this day, you know, they still can rear rear their head going, hi, I'm still here. <laughs> so please know that you're not alone. So I hope that this has been and and please know that there's no judgment from me whatsoever because again, I've I've been there. And what I can tell you is that it does take a lot of effort and commitment and energy on your part to change these patterns and these behaviors and it's so worth it you want to love the work that you're creating you want to feel proud of it you want to appreciate it it is such a healthy fulfilled place to be okay so i'm going to leave you with that with that invitation to allow good things in and to receive compliments and to not belittle your work to follow your own voice, trust, trust yourself, you know, um, you're the most important artist in your life. So just remember that. Okay, my friends, I'm wishing you happy creating until next time. Bye for now. Check out all of the links that I have for you in the description box. There's lots of goodies down there for you.